So again, good evening, everyone. My name is Deacon Eric Ellie. I am your digital minister for the Southern New England Conference of the United Church of Christ. I see some uh, familiar, a lot of familiar faces, some new faces. Uh, this evening is a special evening. Tonight we have with us uh, Andy Mahan from Alter Live. So uh, welcome, Andy. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, in um, as to give a little to give a little room for folks who may be um, you know um, you know a little late running running a little behind um, with a thirty second time limit. Let's go around um, and introduce ourselves so that we you know we know who we are. The, uh, at least the folks who are uh, regularly attend the Tech Deacons uh, Roundtable to know who we are. We know each other. Uh, we have some uh, new faces this evening, and we also have Andy. So um, I introduce myself. I'm the digital minister of the Southern New England Conference. Deb, would you like to go next? Sure. I am um, a tech deacon at Wilbraham United Church in Wilbraham, Massachusetts. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Lori? I am uh, Lori Russell. The, uh, I am on the a deacon at Hope Church in East Providence, Rhode Island. Thank you, Lori. Rich Harrington. I'm the uh, vice moderator at the Center Congregational Church in Manchester, and we did our first live uh, worship service with in-person people last Sunday. Nice. We finally made it there with all our internet connections. Oh, cool. I'd like to hear about that later on. Randall, you're next on my screen, at least. I'm Randy Glenn Denning at uh, First Congregational Church of Ridgefield. I'm on the IT team. Thank you for joining us, Randy. Thank you. Thanks so much. Richard Connolly? I'm Rich Connolly from Leverett Congregational Church in Massachusetts, and I'm one of the techs. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Edie? I'm Edie Steele, the minister at uh, First Congregational Church of Griswold in the rural part of the far eastern side of Connecticut. Thank you, Edie. Yeah. Larry, you would be next. Thank you, muted. Larry. <laughs> Here we go. What's next? Larry Harris, and I'm uh, oh. with the Wilbraham United Church, and I chair the uh, technology committee. Thank you, Larry. Eric? Uh, I'm Eric Russell. I'm the volunteer tech guy for the uh, Trinitarian Congregational Church in North Massachusetts. Thank you, Eric. Sam? I'm the head deacon at First Church Griswold with Pastor Edie, and I'm liking to learn stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, trying to learn stuff. That's, we're all, that's, that's what we're here for. Jane, you're next. Jane Claybaugh from First Congregational in Gardner, Mass. Um, I am the tech administrator is my official title now. Used to be just a tech volunteer. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Mike Higgins, would you care to introduce yourself? Mike Higgins, uh, deacon at First Congregational Church uh, in Griswold with Sam and Pastor Eden. Thank you, Mike. Deb Hubble? Hi, I'm on the um, digital ministry team at the First Church of Christ in Mansfield Center, Connecticut. Oh, nice. Isn't there a drive through in Mansfield? There is. Yes. There is a drive in movie. Yep. There you go. There's what, a what double feature every night. There you go. Uh, Rob, or Bob, excuse me, can you introduce yourself next, please? Did you go for? What's that? Who's next? Oh, you are. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. I was kind of watching the the faces on the screen and jumped out of sequence here. Uh, oh, I'm Bob Gates with the First Congregational Church in Ridgefield, Connecticut, part of the IT team. Thank you, Bob. Tom and Edo, you're next. Yeah, I'm uh, Tom Benito over at First Congregational Church in Bristol, Connecticut, and I'm part of the tech team along with uh, part of the music committee. So, Okay. 
Thank you, Tom. And at least on my screen uh, to the right of Tom is Second Kong. Don't know. Yeah, that's me, David. <laughs> oh, how you doing, David? Uh, good, thank you. How are you, Eric? I'm and well. everybody. Uh, I'm David Brandt from Second Congregational Church in Beverly, Mass. I'm just a member. I'm kind of like trying to run everything for the new minister, and uh, we're making it, but it's very difficult. Never, no such thing as just a member, yes. ever. <laughs> okay, and I believe, Deb, you did go. Deb Hubble, correct? Okay. I and did. for folks who don't have video on, um, Philip. Sorry, my wife was printing to our office computer. My children are, are running around. Uh, I will start my video in a second. I am sure. Phil Bodenstab uh, here in Ridgefield, Connecticut. I work uh, alongside of Bob, and uh, I thought I saw Randy on there. Uh, part of a, a, a subgroup formed by our trustees committee uh, last year, uh, really to accelerate our um, kind of digital streaming uh, program. And if there's one, I guess, in a cruel way, good thing that came of COVID is that it really accelerated our need to come up with a platform to allow congregants to uh, not only interact with us uh, during the pandemic, but also plan for the next couple of years ahead of how can our church, much like a lot of other churches, uh, reach out to our community, reach out to our uh, friends and invite them in to uh, experience uh, worship and other programming over the course of a church calendar year. At this point now, we're kind of ready to maybe make a migration from Zoom and explore some, some other pathways. And we're pleased, Eric, to get the email from you a couple of weeks back on this new uh, uh, provider. And uh, it sounds like it answers a lot of the potential uh, needs uh, that we're looking for uh, as a church. So joining us this evening to, to learn more and converse with you all. So thanks again for, for helping to set this up. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much, Philip. Samuel? Perhaps Samuel had walked away from his computer. Anita, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm sorry I was a little late. I had to leave a meeting to get here late for a meeting. But I'm um, happy to be here and um, looking forward to see what we got on the agenda tonight. Love these meetings. Um, I'm from the uh, Rockland Church, the First Congregational Church in Rockland. Mm -hmm. I'm, um, uh, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here. Okay, good. So at this point, thank you all for introducing yourself. It gives, at least it gives you know, us a chance to, um, to get to know each other. And it also uh, gives Andy an idea of, you know, the, the breadth and the depth of the conference, um, of the Southern New England Conference. And with that, um, I turn it over to Andy at this time. Well, thanks, Eric. And uh, thanks uh, for all the introductions. Uh, Philip, I must say, the, um, I got kicked out of my kitchen because uh, my daughter's cooking dinner. And uh, that was more important than this call. And, uh, and then I, I haven't yet had the obligatory uh, dog bark, but I'm sure that's coming. Um, and actually, I have a really good story about dogs in church, uh, if we get time to it. Um, yeah, so I'm, uh, I live in Boston, actually, uh, one town, uh, two towns over, Arlington. Uh, so Arlington, Cambridge, Boston, uh, Arlington, Cambridge, and then Boston, right? Um, but I recognize a lot of the towns uh, that you mentioned. Um, I, 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 work in, I worked in Manchester. I think you were saying Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, and uh, I spent many years in Connecticut. So Griswold and Bristol and those, those were... I'm afraid they're just towns I drove through. I didn't go to the drive-in movie either, um, but uh, I'm familiar with, uh, with with this whole area. I've lived here almost my whole life. I lived in Washington D.C. as a student, but that was uh, the rest of the time's been here in Southern New England. Uh, and thank you, Eric, for the uh, invitation. Uh, Eric and I uh, got together hmm, about a month, a uh, month and a half ago or so, and um, he already knew more about Alter and Alter Live than than uh, than I thought he would, and so he was way ahead of me. I had to I had to catch up to his speed. Um, so what I'd like to do uh, today uh, this evening is I'll give you a little bit of a glimpse uh, of of the product, uh, talk about why we built it, um, about the kind of problem we're trying to solve uh, our attack, and um, some of the experience that we've had so far. I, I like to talk in a lot of stories, so I'll give you some more stories uh, that hopefully have uh, some purpose uh, to them besides uh, the entertainment value. 
Uh, and whatever kind of questions you have about how have churches tried to implement things, it doesn't necessarily have to be about Altar Live, about, about uh, digital ministry uh, in, in, in general. Um, uh, any technical things about the product uh, that I can answer, I'd be happy to. Um, and so I'll let, uh, I'll drive a little bit and then uh, then you guys can all drive. Uh, all right, let me talk about Alter Life. So we are born of COVID. Uh, the company got started around April, May of, uh, to, of 2020. Uh, it started out really just helping some local churches uh, getting, um, uh, getting their live stream act uh, together. Uh, and actually at the time, everyone said, well, next month when we're, some of us are back in the church. So everyone's thinking June, maybe about half of us would get back in the church and half would be at home. How are we going to bring those two bifurcated uh, segments of the, pop, of, the, of the congregation back together? We don't want folks being left behind, having insiders and outsiders, that kind of thing. Uh, so we started building something for that. Uh, if you want to hear about that, I can tell you what it is, but we never finished it because by August, all of those same churches were saying, we don't think we're going back. So um, now what we, we've, we've gotten pretty good at live streaming, but we want more. We want, it, it's a little, it, and we started to hear this word engagement, right? We would like more engagement. Uh, and so if you're doing things on Facebook or on YouTube, especially, uh, the engagement was mostly, you know, hit the like button or say something in the chat. There's not a lot of depth to chat. There's a lot of hello and what's your favorite pizza topping and that, that kind of thing. Um, and, um, and then maybe sharing and, and things like that. Um, but it wasn't, it really, it was a pale, uh, a, a pale shadow of uh, being in person with people. On Zoom, you had great engagement. You could see everybody, at least you could see their names uh, on the, on the screen. Um, there, then you've all, I'm sure, experienced whatever the, uh, the shortcomings of, of Zoom are. Um, I know for me, I'm a talker. So when you get a crowd like this, I think there's like 20 or 24 of us here. Um, you get, you know, if it's wide open, you get three or four who talk a lot and everybody else doesn't talk. Right? <laughs> they, they try to talk, but it's, it's uh, a little hard to break in. Um, and then of course there's the, the, the issues with, with mute and, and things like that. So it's, I love Zoom and I have actually used Zoom a lot for years before the, uh, before the pandemic. And I think it's the best, I used to be in the collaboration business. I said, video conferencing will never, ever, ever, ever work. And then I saw Zoom, like, wow, they really have cracked the code. And I think they saved the world. Uh, and, and you know, as short of the vaccine, I think that Zoom was probably the best thing that, uh, that we had uh, during the pandemic. Um, at any rate, we built something where people were saying, what we'd like to do is we would like to be able to uh, see each other, but I don't want to have to listen to everybody else, which is not a negative thing. It's just like, I want to sit with my two or three or four people who I, I know and love, and I sit with them during the service. And then I also chat with people afterwards during the coffee hour or something like that. So we set about, to, we, we shifted gears and we started to build something that met those uh, requirements. And the result is Alter Live. It came out around December, about the first week of December last year. Uh, about 700 churches have have created a, what we call a community and they've done something, you know, they've run a service on Alter Live. Um, so we've learned a lot from those who have used it. We've also learned from those who have stopped using it and uh, what, what they would like, you know, what's the gap between being able to use it going further. Uh, we've learned a lot about where Zoom ends and where, where Alter Live might begin and where Facebook and YouTube end and where Alter Live might, uh, might fit. Uh, sometimes it's described as if, um, if YouTube and Zoom got married and had a baby, uh, that would be Alter Live, right? I don't know if that's a, an, an uncomfortable comparison or, or metaphor or not, but what we do is we take live streaming, uh, which might be just the, the, whatever the live streaming solution that you're using now, um, and we combine it with uh, video conferencing, very similar to what you experience here in Zoom. And we put those two things together. So I'll enter into a church service right, and online, and I'll see that there's a, a live stream. I'll also see a seating chart, and then I pick a row. Uh, I might pick an empty row, or I might pick one that's full, uh, full of people, and now when I sit there, I can see the two or three or four people that I'm sitting with in, a, in very much like a Zoom uh, 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 environment, and we're watching the, the live stream, and we can now also be in conversation uh, with, each, with each other, and depending on how interactive or dynamic or what kind of pauses are built into the church service, uh, we can actually have some meaningful discussion 
about the message or about what's going on in our lives or um, you know wh how, how, what sort of impact the, the music has had on us. Uh, and then afterwards, we move out from that auditorium space into uh, what we call the lobby, uh, where now I'm with the same people, uh, but I can kind of mix and mingle and go around to different tables and kind of keep in touch with the people in my community. So that is, that's, the, that's what we set out to build. Um, we've got the basics of it, and then we have to hit a lot of the fine points too. Uh, sometimes it only takes a, a small speed bump to kind of throw everybody off. So uh, there's quite a bit to, to get right uh, in, in the product. Uh, and so what I'll do, I have some, what I like to call my, uh, their baby pictures. I've just got four slides where I'll show, here's what the live stream looked like, here's what the lobby looks like, and a couple of other things. Uh, but let me pause because some of you may have come with questions already, and I wanna make sure that I address them. So um, I'll just, if I, people wanna raise their hands or just speak up, that'd be fine. And I'll just wait a polite 10 seconds and, and then go to, and I'll be able to share my screen, Eric, right? All right, I have a couple of questions. So uh, when uh, you enter, do you have to log, is there a login process or you just enter straight in? All right, that's great. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll show that on the screen. Okay, that's Come right. in, it's an anonymous person. Uh, and actually what happens is, is the system assigns you a pseudonym. Yep. Um, and uh, if you I want, know. then if you want, and you can see the live stream, you can see who else is there. Uh, and you have a limited amount of chatting that you can do with anyone. Um, but when you log in, then you can chat with anyone who's there and you can join a seat and, and have video conferencing. But you do need okay. to log in to, to get the interaction. So when I pick a pew and, and I, I sit, I, you said I see two or three people around me. This is in the virtual yeah. world, right? You'll see a seating chart. So like if you ever uh, bought uh, tickets for uh, you know going to a movie or something like that, you'll see a seating chart. You'll actually see who's sitting in each seat. You see the virtual people. You see the virtual person. You'll see. Yeah. You'll see and then during the service, you can communicate, talk to them. Yes, you can. Yes. But not anybody else other than those two or three. If you move from that row and pick another row, you can talk to other people in that row. But yes, that's right. <laughs> OK, do it and typically do that. If you no, um, but a church there's a lot of things you can do online that you would never do in the physical building. Yeah. Okay. You rarely would get up out of your pew or seat and or row and go sit somewhere else right there in the middle of the service. But it is uh, no one would really know you were doing it in altar life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Bob. So I have some follow-up questions to that. <clears throat> when somebody comes in who's anonymous, uh, we can greet them. Uh, is that correct? Uh, yes, it depends on who we is, is the answer is this, the, 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 so Randall on that one is um, the, um, you can appoint uh, greeters and the greeters then can interact with, uh, with an anonymous person, uh, the rest and, 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 and vice versa. Uh, everybody else though does not con communicate with the anonymous person and, and also vice versa there, you have to log in for that. Is that so, communication oops. verbal or through the chat window? That is through text-based chat. So oh, I logged in. I, I logged into a church, and I got a name assigned to me. It was some. I can't remember what it was, but it wasn't a person's name. It was something like you it's know, usually a color. It's usually a color and an animal. Yeah, right. But I could see that name in the list. There were two hundred people in the list. And I could always see my name. I was identified as anonymous. And I could see some people who had joined, but uh, I think had not checked in. And then I saw a third group that were, quote, checked in. Yeah. But, and I couldn't do much unless I logged in. And on this right. particular case, I chose not to, to create a login and, and so forth and so on. You are describing exactly as we intended it to work, and okay. I, and I hope that was intuitive for you. So I was in the Skatoon Church. Oh, at, at Elim Church in Saskatchewan. Yeah. Yep. Big church, fourteen hundred seats. Beautiful looking church. A little bigger than probably most of us. A little bit, yeah, probably a little bit bigger. <laughs> yeah. Randall, did you have a uh, follow up? Uh, yeah, a couple. Um, <clears throat> at the end of our service, we like to uh, offer prayer partners for those who want some private prayer. And I assume there's something like a breakout room for that. Randall, I'm so glad you're here. 
Um, yes, so that actually is one of the main uh, design points for us. Uh, so in the lobby, and I'll show you when we get there, um, in the lobby, there are different, there are a series of tables and you can name a table that says this table is for prayer. Um, and you join that table because you're looking for prayer. And there might be some, uh, someone who's assigned for intercessory prayer uh, that is already sitting at that table. You might have multiple tables. So if I want to pray with a man or if I want to pray with a woman or maybe someone my age or something like that, I can already see who's at that table. And I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick the table with Randall, right? And uh, nothing against you, Deb, but I'm not going to your table for prayer, right? Um, <laughs> So, uh, and then we would sit there and then obviously we'd have face-to-face -face audio, uh, visual, uh, and, and have just a more intimate time of prayer for that. Right there... now, uh, all of the tables have the same number of seats. It's okay. four seats. Uh, so that. it's no more than four seats and it's no fewer than four seats. Uh, so the no fewer part is, well, all right, if I'm going to meet with you and I want to talk about my addiction... I really don't want someone popping into the table and saying like, hey, how's it, how are you doing guys? It's, you know, the Patriots are playing today. And like, oh, well, go away. <laughs> right. So um, uh, very soon actually, we'll have um, uh, two seated tables, three seated tables, as well as four seated tables. Then the other thing, which is bigger because every single church says this is, do you, do you have any tables that are larger than four? Uh, and the answer to that is no, not today. We will, but not not soon, soon. Uh, that's just a, um, I'm going to get into the technology a little bit later if, if anyone's interested. Uh, but there are just some uh, technology constraints about adding more than four to a table. Uh, some reliability and stability uh, starts, to, starts to kick in, especially if someone's got uh, kind of a low powered, like an old computer or um, compromised bandwidth. Not because they're remote and don't have a lot of bandwidth, although that, that, that sometimes is the case. Although I, like I'm in my, I'm actually in my bedroom instead of the kitchen. So occasionally I, I my Wi-Fi is not as great here, but also if you're, if you've got competition in your house, if four people are using the internet and someone's watching Netflix on their phone or something like that, that your, your bandwidth gets limited. So in order to accommodate uh, all sorts of uh, computing types and, and, uh, and bandwidth limitations, we need to do something else to go beyond four. So the answer is, there's four at a table, uh, and shortly they'll be private for two, uh, and then also larger tables for things like small groups. Oh, and you have to be logged in prayer. to go to a table, correct? You yes, to Bob, I'm going to give you one more, do you have to be logged in question? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, to go to a table, you do need to be logged in. That is correct. Yeah. And when so, the prayer is over, uh, you can go to fellowship or leave the service? That's correct. Yes, Randall. Yes. Uh, final question is, uh, during this period of transition and doing hybrid, uh, some of our presenters, uh, like for a pulpit moment or uh, reading, uh, may be remote rather than in the sanctuary. Uh, does Alter allow for that? That, so what you just described, Randall, is what Alter as a company set out to solve in May, in June of last year which is how do we beam people from home into the church, especially if they're, uh, they've got a participatory role, reading or singing or you know, offering up prayer or something, um, so that people in the church can see, you know, we're not, we don't want to exclude the people at home, uh, and vice versa, everything that's going on in the church can also be beamed, you know, back into uh, uh, everybody's living room. Um, so I am sure that that hybrid situation is what many of you are, are moving into as, as COVID is rounding the, the, the final corner here. Um, but no, that is not, that, that we, we shelved that product, which I really should call a project. We didn't really finish it. Um, we will take it off the shelf again, but probably not until late this year, All right? So that was our initial hope. But then once every single church was telling us that's not really what we want, it didn't, after you hear it 10 times, you go like, maybe we're building the wrong thing. Um, but I think uh, two, in 2022, boy, that's the first time I've said that number. Um, I think that the, 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 what you've described will be the norm for a lot of people. Any other questions? Um, so I have one uh, small question, I think. So um, you said that you know, it, it goes or integrates with the streams that you're already doing. And you know, one of the things like we currently stream to Facebook, but one of the things we've been trying to get to um, at some point is a stream just like simultaneously Facebook and like YouTube because you hit different audiences and that type of stuff. And 
I know there's different solutions out there and everything, but I couldn't quite make out from your website whether, like, do you act as that middleman in the streaming or, you know, or something like that? Like, how, like, can you provide that type of solution or is it that we just slew this and then you, like, hook into that somehow? I'm not sure how that works. All right. Let me, uh, let me translate just for everybody. It was a little scratchy at the beginning uh, when you were saying. So uh, what most churches do today with, with Alter Live is since they're all, they probably already before they ever heard of us, they were already streaming, probably either using Zoom or streaming to Facebook or streaming to YouTube and maybe doing two or more of those. Uh, there's some other solutions out there. Uh, there's a thing called Church Online. A lot of churches use the larger size churches. Um, so since churches are already streaming, what we do to make it a little easier for whoever, whatever the tech team is doing is like, just take the stream that you already got going on Facebook and on YouTube copy that link and put it into Alter Live, and now we'll just be another one that gets that receives that. We have had a lot of uh, requests that people could, that churches could stream directly to Alter Live rather than having to go through a medium like, uh, uh, like YouTube or Facebook for whatever reasons. Um, and so that is something that we're building. So I'll try to, um, I've worked in software my whole life and we always say, oh, that's coming, right? So I'm, I just want to try to be as clear as I can of what we don't have. And then uh, what I was saying with Eric, when we met, um, we have sort of our short-term roadmap and that's things we're almost positive about for the next, in the next 30 days. Where we'll be doing things. So when I say something, I'll try to say if it's in that 30 day window, if it's beyond that, then it's kind of like the next 90 days after that. So that would bring us to the end of summer. Uh, and then there's anything beyond that, which really means we've, thought about it and talked about it and it's on a whiteboard somewhere but put right. um, so um, what uh, the the ability to uh, stream directly uh, from whatever uh, streaming uh, software you've got into alter live uh, that's something in the 30-day uh, window um, and then will that rebroadcast to Facebook or, or, or to um, and or YouTube or is that just going to be basically at alter live all right if within the 30 days, it will be for Alter Live. Okay. Beyond that, in the 90 day time frame, then using Alter Live, using basically us as the as the point where you could go to multiple uh, sites. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right. Okay. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to share my screen. And there we go. Couldn't find the button at first. Uh, all right, this is, uh, this is a view of Alter Live, right? So when, um, you, what, what would happen for your, uh, the people in your congregation is they would, they would receive a link. It would either be on your website or in an email that you send to them. They click on the link and th this is where they would come and they would see the live stream, right? So just as if they were watching on, on YouTube or Facebook. And then what you see over here is all of the people who were there. So when Bob was talking about the church that he went to, he got to see all of the names of the people who are there. Now on Zoom, that's what you already have, right? On YouTube and on Facebook, you'll see that there's maybe, I could see that there's 35 people there or 75 people who are watching, but you don't know who they are. And are they the same people who were there last week or are they new people this week? Uh, there's really no way to tell until somebody actually uh, enters something into the chat, in which case now their name is, uh, is revealed to everyone. Uh, so in Alter Live, when you get here, um, as soon as you get here, your name or the name that you're assigned uh, is here in the list. And so one of the nice things that I find and what I hear from a lot of churches is even if someone doesn't pick a seat, which you'll see later, when I don't sit down in a row and have a video chat with somebody, it's just nice to see who's there, right? I kind of compare it to um, sitting in the back row at church. Like I can just see everybody that I'm with my people. There's just a real warming sense of wholeness uh, uh, when, when I see that. So this is something that we've heard from quite a few that they, they really like to see the list here. I'm gonna click and zoom in on that, on that list for a second. So this is the, those, these are the same names there from that list. And you'll see that there's, a, there's CJ Brown, he's a greeter, I'll talk about greeters in a second. Chris Cortez, Irene Knott, <clears throat> Jason Edwards. But then you see these odd names and I'm sure Bob got one of these. Um, Beige Skunk, Coffee Jackal, which is my personal favorite, uh, orange hedgehog. So usually it's a color uh, and an animal. Um, so when you come in, if you haven't logged in, you're assigned a pseudonym. 
So now I can see that there are people that, you know, I, they may be longtime members of your church, uh, could be the person who lives with you, just hasn't logged in. Um, but it also is, might be someone who's just checking your church out. So Chris Cortez uh, cannot speak with Beige Skunk or with Coffee Jackal. However, CJ Brown, who is a greeter and Irene not their greeter, they can actually initiate a conversation. Uh, so for those of you who are streaming to, um, to YouTube or Facebook, uh, you know how it, I don't know if it's frustrating, but certainly uh, you, it, it, it's not, you're not capable of knowing that there's a newcomer there and then initiating a conversation. You actually have to kind of urge them uh, or, or somehow, you know, uh, lure them in, into uh, revealing their presence. Uh, and then you're like, oh, like, oh, that's a new person. And then in a, in a, hopefully in a very constructive way, you know, tagging them and saying, oh, is there anything, can I introduce you to anyone? Or can I tell you about the church? Or maybe we meet after or something like that. Um, so that's in the, that's um, stood on its head here. It's here, um, uh, CJ Brown, when he sees someone who's anonymous, can actually initiate that conversation, and it's through text-based chat, uh, and just say, "Oh, hi, uh, I, you know, do you need any help, or are, are you new here?" And of course, if it's someone who's been there for a while, they're like, "No, it's 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 me, it's Deb," you know, like, "Oh, okay, Deb. Well, if you if you log in, uh, you'll be able to do more stuff when you get here." Uh, so that's uh, that's something that um, uh, people seem to appreciate that you don't have to wait for the, uh, for the newcomer uh, to initiate conversation. Uh, I'm going to pause for a second. Uh, so one of the reasons we do that is, uh, or the reason we do that, I should say, is, uh, is the balance of accessibility and security. So we all have heard of Zoom bombing and I hope none of you have ever had to experience it. I have never experienced it myself, um, but um, just allowing anybody to come in and then you know, expose themselves or say whatever disruptive thing. And it, it, may, it may not be nefarious, but um, someone who really doesn't belong there at this time, maybe they, you know, they are, are, are having a bad day. Um, so the, the only way you're actually that someone, when someone enters that they're able to interact with anyone else is if they log in. And now there's a degree of control. So first of all, they have to, you know, show who they are. Uh, the way you log in is with your Google ID or with your Facebook ID or with your email. Um, and if they do become disruptive, uh, the greeters have the ability to dismiss someone from, from the event. And when they're dismissed, they can't come back in. And they actually cannot come back in ever, right? Uh, so um, unless the administrator um, readmits them, right? So if they try to show up again the next Sunday, unless they came in with another identity, uh, they, would not, like, they would not be able to come back in. Uh, but once, you, once you've logged in, um, now you have access to all of the, um, uh, the interactive features. So that's how, that, that was the balance that we struck, um, especially early on um, when um, most of the churches we were talking to uh, actually had been using Zoom. That was, uh, that was a big, big question. Like, how do we prevent, prevent that from happening? I will say it, we still get uh, questions from churches, or I should say requests, because some of them do find that when someone is logged in, they are a little bit too chatty in the chat or the things that they're saying are inappropriate, not bad, inappropriate, but just kind of like you're just, you're a distraction to the, to the rest of the congregation. And so is there a way for the greeters to moderate the chat a little bit and kind of slow someone down? Like they can only post once every five minutes or can you delete something that they've posted or can you prevent someone from posting again uh, for a while? So, um, there's still a need for greater uh, uh, granularity in, in that type of um, relationship between accessibility and uh, and uh, uh, openness and security. So um, those are you know it's a it's a moving target. Uh, hopefully we it's not it's not too wildly moving, but that's the uh, that's the whole uh, thought process behind the uh, the pseudonyms and the anonymous uh, access. Are there questions about uh, that, uh, Bob? I know you have a question. I told you you have one more question about logging in. I don't, I don't think this is a login question. I'm just gonna, it's a comment, only a comment, no question. Uh, when I um, joined the church in Skatoon, my, since I did not log in, I got one of those colorful names. It was separate. There were three categories. And under that category, I forget exactly what it was called, but it was clear I, had, I was a visitor and had not logged in. So you had those anonymous in your list, right? Intermixed with, with others in the, in the, and I don't know whether that's an option or not, 
but we were in three groups, members who had logged in, others who had logged in that weren't members, I think, and then there was me by myself since I was the only one that yeah. ventured that far north. On That's Sunday. good, uh, uh, but you've got a great memory too. All right, so there are three, uh, visually you'll see three things. Your name is always at the top. Right, whether you're your anonymous name or oh, okay, so that's why I was at the top. That's one category, category of one person. Uh, the next one is everyone who is not seated, and then oh, the next group it. is everyone who actually has taken a seat, uh, which is helpful because if you are looking for someone to sit with, uh, you might want to skip past the people who are not seated and, and, and look at the list of people who are seated. All right. Do you? Uh, oh, I'm we still get one more, Bob. Later. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll give a bonus on that. I didn't. I didn't use up my login. <laughs> Do you I have the? I listen. I believe Edie. Uh, did Edie? Did you have your hand raised? Yeah, I. Ha I have. I have a really, really big. Is this for people who are in church? or everyone is remote? So this is for people who are online. Okay. So, oh, okay. But you could have people at church, it's just the online people are the only ones that access this. That's correct, that's correct. And I would say that I haven't seen anything in Alter Live, nor can I imagine it um, without thinking really, really hard of, of a way to have anyone who's in the building to also be online. Uh, the reason is there's a lot of feedback that's, uh, about, that's about to kick in. Uh, that's the first reason. Um, but like I said earlier, um, I, I think a lot of you are probably uh, either already or just about to uh, have some in the building and some at home. And right. that you know, bridging that gap is going to be one of the next really important things uh, for churches in terms of their, their online access. Uh, I don't have a good answer for you. Just um, did I say 2022 there? Now I've said it twice. Um, that's probably something at the end of this year or, or early next year that, that we'll be looking at. Because that was the thing that we looked at first. So we already have a lot of thoughts about how to do it. We've got some technology. It was probably, you know version 0 0.5 technology. Uh, so uh, it, right. we can't just take it off the shelf and then throw it out there. We'll have to rethink it a little bit. Would what? you have a, oh, I'm sorry, would you have a latency issue also when interacting with people who are in church watching live and then watching what stream since you got a, you, even on YouTube, you might have, we find there's at least a 10 second latency issue. Facebook there's, there's, might be a little more. There's some latency. And like I said, so we're, we probably deployed it in about five churches and there were all sorts of problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so latency was probably one of them. Uh, so there's quite a, like, like this is why I'm saying it would probably be till next year. Uh, mm -hmm. And we'd have to see is latency, is it tolerable? Is it noticeable? Um, or is it, you know, is it something that's, uh, you know, if you don't fix that, then you don't have a solution. How do you get something like prayer requests over to your minister? I know our minister actually, we, we dual stream to YouTube and to Facebook, and we either have someone watching that and texting the minister, or the minister's actually got a feed to both and yeah. watching comments coming through. Well, if, 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 if he, whoever that minister is, uh, he or she's pretty good if they can keep their eye on a monitor and two monitors, or now maybe and, two monitors, yeah. and the congregation, and, and, um, and still be prayerful. Um, I want to so an ultra um, live. Uh, it has been used in that scenario that you've talked about. Not a lot, though, but people use the chat. They'll use chat. So it's the same way they would do on YouTube. And okay. Uh, people enter in the chat. I have seen a couple of customers who have twisted things very cleverly so that the pastor can join a row of people and then everybody else can see the pastor in the row with those people and can hear what he or she is saying. And um, they're smarter than me. I don't know how they got it to, to, to work that way without all kinds of crazy feedback. And, and mm -hmm. things, but, um, mm -hmm. but if they can do it, then certainly we can do it. So I actually, uh, I, I was at, at a church watching it happen once and I invited our chief technology officer to, to come in. And uh, he was quite, I, th I think at first he was angry. 
<laughs> but then uh, he was quite intrigued. Like, how did he do that? And should he be able to do that? Is he, is he going to break it? You know, um, but what you described there is probably part of how we would we would try to do that that hybrid where some are in the building and some are online. Andy, I believe uh, Deb Hubble has her hand raised. All right, Deb. Thanks. Um, I, I guess it's not really a question, but more of a, a comment to piggyback on what Edie brought forward about hybrid worship, because I'm going to say we're at least half in person and half um, online. Maybe it's even two thirds in person at this point. Um, and so you already mentioned the feedback issue, but then thinking about the people who are in person and sucking up all your bandwidth on the Wi-Fi. Um, but then if, if I'm the worship leader, I'm not sure I want to see all those people sitting in the pews looking at their devices yeah. to interact with everybody around them. So, uh, yeah. you know, I guess that's just my comment for, for you for future development. Yeah, there are going to be a lot of technology issues and a lot of uh, probably more human issues. Um, the humans are always harder to solve. Any other I do questions? know that there are people who look at their phones now during the service. Uh, they're called teenagers. <laughs> and, and and this pastor. <laughs> because we do, we, um, we collect comments and, and, uh, and prayer concerns, and we ask people where they're, you know, yeah. I, I forget who in the in the chat, you know, uh, in, in our meeting tonight said it, but, you know, we prompt people like, where, where, are, you, where are you joining us from? You know, what's your favorite mm -hmm. color? That sort of thing. Yeah. So. And so I David use my, his hand mine right for my hand. online Bible. <laughs> yes, yes. There you go. <laughs> the pastors in my church say, oh, you know, when we, when we read scripture, they're like, please follow along in your own Bible or in your mobile app. <laughs> they acknowledge that people have it, yeah. So in terms of, I just like to say that, um, so I work in IT, so when I wired up the router and gateways in my church, I specifically made sure that the Wi-Fi for, you know, people in it have, there's a, there's a bandwidth limit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, they, and, and then on top of that, the live stream itself is hardwired and just yep. takes priority over everything. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I mean, I'm we're I'm lucky that where we're at, we have ample upload speeds, um, but that's why I, I also like advocated that if we ever did run into any problems, like we can request to you know if 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 it's affordable to be able to up you know to upgrade the upload the the, the internet you know package for for churches and things for that reason. Yeah, and I see. I see. Also, see that uh, David has his hand raised. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, this product sounds like a great hybrid solution, but um, like Zoom, I've experienced with uh, starting hybrid uh, services in our church that a lot of people are now complaining about the music quality and the sound that they're hearing of the organ or piano or people singing in the church. It just doesn't sound the same like when I feed the music directly from vMix into Facebook or YouTube, it sounds way better. Um, is that the same kind of thing like with Zoom or, you know, you guys? What I, I think what, what you're talking about there is ambient sound. Um, so if it's on Zoom and you have a microphone, right, um, I mean, I've listened to church services, especially, you know, like in a big cathedral or something like that. Boy, in the cathedral, it's beautiful, and on online, it's terrible, right? And uh, I mean, you just you get echo that that doesn't belong there, right? Um, and even in a even in a nice intimate chapel uh, with good acoustics, when that just comes into the microphone, unless the microphone's really great, you know, it's 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 not gonna it's not gonna work that well. But I don't think that has anything to do with because were you pre-recording before? Is that what you were? Yes, some of it was pre-recorded. However, we're trying to go live now that we're trying to do Zoom and more hybrid uh, services. Um, it's just it's just difficult. It just sounds, a lot of people are saying on Zoom, it sounds way different than when I heard everything on YouTube and, and Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I think that has I, to do with whether it was uh, pre-mixed or, or not. And I do know that um, on Zoom, um, Zoom compresses the heck um, out of sound. 
And um, there is a feature um, that you can turn on in Zoom called Turn On Original Sound. Oh, I know. Um, so um, yeah. if, you, uh, if you turn on original sound, uh, know that you will, you will get the fidelity, uh, but you won't get like the same fidelity you would get in, in um, you know, in uh, Facebook. Uh, I think in terms in terms of you know all the platforms, I think Facebook is is okay. Uh, uh, YouTube is is a bit better. But the the best platform out there right now is uh, live stream Vimeo. They they use minimal compression across across the platform. Yeah, um, we found we found with Zoom, especially with the organ, certain stops, certain areas, you could do whatever you want with Zoom, and it still comes out poorly. Right. Exactly. And the only way we got around it is we feed Zoom uh, either what we're streaming out to Facebook or YouTube. It, it's a little bit cleaner. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, um, we, uh, we were hybrid at one point, went away from hybrid, and, you know, came, and we're coming back to it. But when we went, were in hybrid, we had the organist playing live. And um, we actually found it worked pretty well for us. But we have a decent um, set of microphones and sound system in the, in the church uh, to pick up on it. But one thing that was interesting is when I went to the recorded, my, the organist was actually kind of complaining to us that it wasn't sounding as good on Facebook as she was expecting it to. And it actually turned out that I had to ignore Facebook's streaming rules and send it at a higher bit rate than they say right. I should send it at. And then it worked. But otherwise, they were also compressing, you know, the heck out of things, as, as people were saying. So um, it's it's actually an interesting mix on there um, to make sure that you're actually putting it out at the right levels um, as well. Um, so it really comes down to, I think, what equipment you have combined with what settings you've done for whether it's OBS, you know, or, or whatever you're using for that stream. All right. So I'm I guess gonna, getting. So I'm so, not a sound guy. I'm going to go ahead and skip past that. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I see we have about ten minutes left. So uh, I still have two baby pictures I, I wanted to share. So let me let me show this. Oh, there we go. All right. Caught myself. Okay. So. Yes. Th that was. <clears throat> so uh, once you've entered and you're watching the live stream, uh, you're able to you're able to uh, now pick a seat. So you'll see. I don't know if someone's talking or. Um, you'll see a seating chart. Am I doing everything all right? Ground beef and the other figure. Okay, uh, let me do that again. I didn't know if somebody was not, not able to see the screen. So you'll see a seating chart. This, this is a gift, so it'll just come around again. So I'll see the seating chart, and, I, and when I hover over someone's uh, square, I can see their name. And so this is Beth Canterbury and Cheryl Wells, two friends of mine. So I'm going to sit with them. And so when I continue to see the live stream, and then the three of us are sitting together. So you'll see that again. I just hover over that and pick those. So I could pick any of the other rows as well. Uh, and then I go in there, and you'll see that our, our microphones are muted to start with. Uh, that's something we actually had to learn. Um, and... Um, if I take my, my mic off of mute, the volume of the live stream will automatically go down so we, we don't get into that feedback loop as we talk together. <clears throat> what we actually do find is that there's not a lot of chatting, there's not a lot of talking uh, during the live stream itself. As you can see, the woman at the, on the bottom screen, Cheryl, um, she's actually looking at her TV and she's got her Bible open and her notebook. Um, she doesn't really wanna hear Beth and me talking about whatever, right? Um, so. What we do find is that people talk in text-based chat. They'll have a group chat of three or four people, uh, either within your row or people in other rows as well. Uh, so that's uh, th there's a lot of interaction that happens that way. Uh, just because of time, I'm going to kind of zoom a little bit ahead, um, but uh, we can come back to this if, if you'd like. Um, after the service ends, everybody is moved automatically from that auditorium view into what we call the lobby. And so I'll see a bird's eye view of a bunch of tables, right? And actually, whoever I was sitting with to begin with, uh, I'll still uh, now I'll be at a table with them. So if I was in the middle of a conversation with someone and the service came to an end and we got moved to the the lobby, I don't have to I don't have to go find them again. We'll we'll be sitting at a table together. But I can easily see who's at the other tables, and I can just move over to another table, just kind of like coffee after after church. You might be in a 
two minute conversation or five minute conversation with someone and then move on and, and talk with someone else, that kind of thing. So the combination of the bird's eye view plus the, plus the, the screens up here. I did wanna tell you one story about these four people. So one of them is me hand waving there. Um, and then there's these two young women in their twenties. There's, uh, there's Heather and Jill, Jill is in the blue. And um, they were, there was the first week they had been using the altar live. And so I popped in there and asked them uh, what their experience was. And they both said, well, you know, we're introverts. And so we actually don't hang around after church. That whole small talk during coffee is not really something that we enjoy that much. So we usually go out afterwards to get our own coffee and we'll have a real, what they call meaningful conversation. Um, and I was a little bit taken aback because I'm like, uh oh, are we not having a meaningful conversation right now? But actually to them, we were having, uh, we weren't talking about the weather or how, how was your week? And, you know, sort of shallow questions like that. We we're actually talking about their experience right here. So they, they quite enjoyed, even though I was a stranger to them, uh, meeting together. Then this fourth person, Michelle, showed up. Michelle, as you can see, you might be able to see, she had a, she had a dog in her lap. Okay, Jill said, I mean, Heather said, oh, I love dogs. I love when people bring their dogs on the Zoom calls and things because it's the only thing that gets me out of, you know, that gets me through the week. And then Jill said, oh, I have my dog right here. Now, these two are friends. They don't live together. Heather didn't know that Jill had a dog. And so all of a sudden now, the three of them are like talking about dogs. I have a dog too. And I, I pointed my camera at my dog. Having a great conversation about dogs and, you know, isn't it wonderful? And then whatever else is going on in their lives. The thing, I talked to Michelle later. And she had been going to that church for 20 years. And she said, I have seen those two girls. She called them girls. I've seen those two girls for years, you know, for three, four, five years. But I've, the only relationship I have with them is I make eye contact and I wave and I smile and I say good morning. And that's it. For five years, that was their entire relationship. But because they were in this type of environment, now they're bringing what's in their home with them, uh, whatever is behind them or whatever noises are happening or somebody's walking by. Uh, that kind of thing. So, you know, maybe someone's wearing a baseball cap uh, of a team that doesn't make sense for where you live, right? Um, and so it just starts a conversation, that kind of thing. And so there are things that we don't bring to church, our dogs, or maybe our baseball hat or, or whatever, or our books uh, that are behind us, that actually now come in here. And so this was an intergenerational uh, relationship that that got begun here. So as as someone who works at Alter Live and, and saw that happening, it's, uh, it's, it's quite meaningful uh, to me. Uh, you, some of the tables are marked off. You can mark them off for prayer. So there, you, you'll see it comes around again. There's a welcome table, a meet the pastor table, a prayer table, a next steps table, a volunteer opportunities table, things like that. Or just unlabeled, just go and uh, meet with a friend. But a lot of churches, uh, they find time either before or after the service. Um, sometimes they have a parallel. They'll put stuff, they'll live stream on, on Facebook and then set up altar live as kind of a prayer chapel. So during the service, if people wanted prayer, they could come there or another day during the week, like a Tuesday night prayer, uh, prayer session or something like that. So um, you click on the, you click join on the table and this is me and my son. Uh, my son lives in Maine. Uh, he used to go to church with me down here. Uh, so we actually visited one of the churches that's using altar live. And then we have found time to, to, to pray together. So what I find, the reason I pick these is that those are the things that the churches that we have talked to that they really value. Um, I will say that we put a tremendous amount of work into the live stream and sitting in rows together in, in, the, in the live stream. And that gets used, but it doesn't get used as much as we thought. Uh, and some people are kind of like, it's a little weird looking at other people and not talking to them while watching the live stream. But the lobby and the opportunity for prayer is what people have said has really made a big difference uh, for them. And of course, being able to, you know, being very welcoming to people who are coming in. So I hope that the folks at Elam Church were welcoming to you, Bob. Uh, I, I have heard some stories from that church of, um, there was actually one just last week, someone from Brazil who tuned in. He was, he's planning on moving there for uh, his PhD studies in September. So he was just checking it out. Uh, if that was a church he'd like to go to. And he actually sat down in a row during the service uh, with one of the pastors, actually, uh, and is probably uh, is planning on probably going to that church. Uh, when well, I'm going away. back on I'm going back on Sunday. It's the, Are you going back? Yeah, because uh, it's the first virtual that they've had in a year or something like that. So what I was watching Sunday was, you know, uh, um, just a, you know, I'll call it a Zoom session to kind of connotate. There was nobody in church. We saw uh, nobody, no views of the church itself. 
we saw the, the minister in a room kind of preaching, but I'm hoping now that there are people in the church, as I said, it's a 1,400-seat uh, auditorium, and so hopefully they'll have at least a few people there, and that yeah. part of what we see will be the, the minister or the pastor actually preaching from inside the church. Yes, yes. Well, that'd be great. And if that's happening, if that happens, then I'm going to log in this time. You'll log in. Let yeah. me right. change my name, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to Blue um, Bunny or something like I, that. I see in the chat uh, that it might take a lot of moderation. So we actually have had a lot of requests for moderation, um, especially if, um, like, there's been a little bit of, when, especially when people talk about youth group, using it for youth group, is there a way for uh, there to be some moderation? Um, one thing that we're looking at is the ability for, let, let's say there's three or four in a row and the, and the live stream is playing, for any, any person in the row to be able to mute everybody, right? And that's like, please let's save the chatter for, for later, right? Uh, that kind of thing. Um, and then in the text-based chat, uh, as I, I think I mentioned earlier, uh, the ability for the greeters or, or someone on staff to moderate the chat, either deleting comments or, or slowing down or, or blocking someone from making comments. Um, Jane asked a question about, um, or maybe was responding to a question about breakout rooms. So um, yeah, they, they're, this is a little bit inspired by breakout rooms. So you could think of the tables in the lobby as a breakout room. And what I really like about it is, is the bird's eye view. So not, not that I would get tired of talking with the three or four people I'm with, um, but if I see someone that I've, I've been wanting to meet or, or talk to, I can easily just, you know, you just go like this. You do it on Zoom all the time, like, all right, bye, right? And you don't even have to say bye. You do this and everyone knows you're leaving. Uh, and then I can just hop over to another table. So it's, it's very fluid. Uh, and so if the, um, the personal dynamics, the interpersonal dynamics in the tables is, is, is uh, just much, much more natural than it is in the, in the rows during the live stream. I believe uh, Deb Trimble has her hand raised. I do. Um, so do you need to watch this on a computer monitor screen or has it also been optimized for tablet view or cell I, phone? That's a great question, Deb. I am a boomer. I don't know how people use their phones and get anything done. Um, <laughs> it, Me either, and, but. <laughs> and, uh, I will just say in, 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 in much of the software world, it, you know, you're, it's really mobile first designed for mobile first. Uh, and then we did not do that. We designed for laptop first. And um, part of that was about, you know, um, usually have much better bandwidth. Um, the big screen really helps. Uh, so we, we have launched a mobile app serve. So for, uh, it, and it's a native app, right? So what happens now is if you get the link and you're on your phone, you click, it will open up your mobile browser and you will be able to watch the live stream and you'll be able to see who else is there. Um, even if you're logged in. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, let me take that back. You can't log in on the mobile browser, right? Uh, you, you can see the live stream and you can see who else is there. But if you wanted to interact with anyone, if you wanted to take a seat, it will, you'll get a, a pop-up that will say uh, to download the, the app. And then you would download the app. There's a lot going on. As you can imagine, there's, there's a stream for the live stream. There's a three or four way uh, a video conference that's going on. There's chat that's going on. So there's a lot that can go wrong. So by having an app, that we built ourselves, uh, we have a lot more control over it. So if you're gonna use the advanced features, it does. It... Um, I have another question too. Um, so this, I just wanna make sure I understood this cause I kind of missed part of the earlier conversation. This basically will wrap around whatever you're doing to stream. So if you're using OBS or Vimeo or, or uh, any of those other applications, this, wraps around that piece so you're still using the application to do streaming <laughs> yeah so it's really okay. both ways wherever you're oh i'm getting a note that my connection is unstable i i promised you i'd get that um the uh wherever however you're streaming now pre let's presume you're streaming to youtube and or facebook right you could just have that wrap around as you mentioned it kind of like ricochet into alter live uh, there are also some ways, depending on which streaming service that you use, that you could go directly into Alter Live. So if you use um, uh, Resi or Restream, I haven't heard anyone mention those. Uh, they're typically for larger churches. Um, even if you use Zoom, although you get a much, you get a you get a big lag time uh, if it's on Zoom. It's a, probably more than a minute. 
So the people watching online are going to be about a minute behind, which is okay because there, there's really no interaction between the people live and the people um, uh, watching online. But um, you could, under certain circumstances, stream directly into Alter Live. And within the month, we're releasing something so that'll be much, much easier to do that. So you can go directly from your vMix or, or OBS or something like that. Okay, I have one more question. Is there any way you can show us a little bit about how you set this up for the first time? I can. We're right at 802, so I'm happy to I'm happy to do that. Um, let me see if I can knock off some quick questions if you want to if you don't mind hanging around. So let me see. Um, yes, Samuel, I do think it's good for prayer. So I'm going to leave your comment alone on that. Uh, for small, we heard well, everyone that we talked to wants to use it for small groups, but their groups are not as small as four people. And it's hard unless you split your small group in half or in thirds across several tables. It's not really great for that right now. We are moving to expand uh, the tables, the size of the tables. Initially, that would be tables of eight, moving up to 12, and then classroom style for like, you know, 25 or 50 people. Um, and that is, that is not within the next 30 days. That's, that's in the 90 days after that. Uh, Eric, yeah, thank you. So we take the stream URL or the stream key from, uh, from wherever else you're, you're broadcasting to and we use that. And I graduated from uh, Georgetown University. Uh, I don't wanna say what year, but it was 1985. So unless you're, if your son is my age. <laughs> and uh, I never went up to, I, there was a very, he went to American. Yeah, there's a really great pizza place up near American University, but um, I, didn't know any, I didn't know any students up there. We are at the top of the hour, and I want to make uh, I want to be mindful of folks' time, uh, especially uh, since it is it is the, an evening session. Also, it's nice outside, but also we we're given and offered um, freely by, um, you know, by uh, um, you know um, Andy the um, a plethora of information, and I don't want to stop that either. So um, you know, if if everyone if everyone wants to continue on. Um, you know, you're more than welcome to stay. Uh, if you, if you're running on a tight schedule, um, you know, you know, leave as, leave as your time permits. Uh, so Phil asked a great question that I don't want to answer, but, uh, some people have left, they have used Alter Live and then did not continue with it. And so what were some of the reasons? Uh, so we all, we actually always do an exit survey. Uh, not everyone responds. Uh, I can tell you that in the early days, uh, so December and January, uh, and, and even into February, the, the platform was not that stable, right? It was quite, it was, if you used it, if anyone used it back then, you would have said there were some glitches. Uh, all of a sudden you would disappear or someone else would disappear or they'd freeze. Uh, so that, that, was a, that was problematic. A lot of churches wanted to keep on going through that, um, but for some they're like, we'll come back later um, uh, when, it, when it's more stable. That was one thing. That was in the early going. Um, we thought we might have a mobile app by January 1st. I uh, forget the date, but it was something like April 1st. It's only four months late. So um, a, lot of, a lot of churches were waiting. They're like, we got to have a mobile app. If we don't have the mobile app, then half of our church is on, on, on the mobile. It's just, not, it's just not a solution. So they were waiting for the mobile app, and uh, uh, that wait was too long for them. Um, when we had the mobile app, there were some issues around logging in, um, that, uh, people sometimes got caught in a little bit of a loop, um, particularly for, um, uh, uh, on iPhone. I don't know why. I, so for whatever reason, Android is a lot easier to develop for, but at any rate, those, uh, those bugs are all, you know, they're all behind us. Um, so we do reach back out to those churches. Um, some of them have said that, uh, there were some who said the cost. So the cost is uh, $69 a month. Uh, so for some church budgets, especially if you're around 50 people, that's, that can be, I, you know, that can be a decent dent uh, in the budget. Um, we're moving to where we think you could use it as a replacement for Zoom, you know, for meetings, for staff meetings, <coughs> things like that. And so that could that help recover some of your Zoom costs. That's about $15 a month for Zoom. Um, so it takes some of that out of there. Um, so that was that was an issue, particularly for smaller churches. Um, and some churches, uh, because they're moving back in, uh, they're just, they're just not, you know, they're not putting, they're not considering digital to be 
a long-term thing for them. So they, they've moved away. Um, I, I just have a kind of like a comment and question. Um, for us, like a big draw to Zoom was the fact that a lot of people were already trained on it because they were, you know, teachers or um, other things like, uh, and, and on top of that, there was already a lot of um, material online to coach people on how to use Zoom. So my question is, um, does Alter Live have uh, materials for uh, being able to train or just like kind of tutorial type stuff for uh, the members to be able to get accustomed to things? Because of course, you know, I, like I had to take on a lot of those responsibilities and, and I'm sure that we've all been helping each other out, but um, does Alter Live have those kinds of tutorials and materials? Yes, yes. Uh, so there's a tutorial, but also we found some of the things uh, that lots of people ran into. So I'll just tell you a nice easy one is uh, if when, when you pick a seat, the presumption is when you're taking a seat that you're going to be in a video conference uh, session with at least one other person, right? So your camera, you gotta, your, your camera needs to work and your microphone needs to work. And our presumption also is that you would start with your camera enabled. You wouldn't enable it later and your microphone enabled. And if you didn't have it enabled, that was not good. Um, so uh, you know how um, what, what the, whatever app you're using, uh, if it's the first time and it wants to use the camera, you'll get a pop-up that says, oh, this app wants to use your camera. Do you give it permission, right? And uh, many, many people, their reflex to any question that is asked of them by a pop-up, the answer is no. So I get a lot of pop-ups that say, is it okay to know your location? And then uh, this app, I'm like, this app doesn't need to know my location, no. Right? Is it okay if this app, um, you know, asks for a cookie or sends you emails? Like, no, no. And so, a lot of people using Alter Live, no, they would hit no to the camera uh, request, and that left them dead in the water. And there's a way to recover from that, but if you're not facile with the innards of the fifth layer down in your Chrome settings, um, it's very discouraging. So um, we actually had a tutorial on like here. You need to make sure that you say yes to that. However, now we've just built it into the product that you almost can't get it wrong. Like basically when you pick, you click on a seat, you get a pop, now you get a pop-up that doesn't say, do you give permission? You get a pre-pop-up that says, hey, you've had, you're, you're gonna take a seat and you need to tell the browser to give permission to your camera. And here's what it's gonna look like when it asks that question, <laughs> right? And so when you see that, say yes or allow. Right, and then 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 you close our pop up, and then the browser pop up comes up, and now we never have that problem again. So a lot of the things that were in the tutorials about training people, and in the early days of the pandemic, when people using Zoom, like it took many people months to figure out how to use that mute button, um, and some maybe still have still not. Uh, but there were just a, like some basic use, you know, basic human error. You know, it, it, you don't have, you don't have to be a genius to uh, to use it. Um, you know, there's things that we that we need to learn what people were bumping into, and so a lot of those things. Um, but yeah, we, of course we have um, we have some video tutorials um, for the uh, on on the administrator side. We have a lot of tech guides and things like that. Yeah, thank you, uh, Andy. I believe we have a question uh, from Jim who had his hand raised for a while. Hi, thanks. Um, and then to so say, I apologize. I apologize. I uh, got here late, but is there a period? Does it take a period to? Uh, make decisions and implement things before you start using it? Or is it fairly plug and play? Oh boy, that's awesome. Sam, is it Sam? That's a great question. Oh, Jim, I'm sorry. Um, well, it is plug and play, but most churches, uh, they'll, there'll be one or two people who play with it for, for a couple of days, right? They'll run okay. one or two, you know, fake services, uh, and try it out. Um, and then there's one or usually they do one or two Sundays uh, where they have, you know, kind of small invited group. And if it goes well, uh, then they start expanding the, the group. And I would tell you the reason is Sunday, I mean, that's the main show, right? So let's not like, we don't want to mess with the main show and we don't want to introduce this to all, our whole congregation. And if it, is it really going to work or are there going to be little problems or there going to be technical glitches, like whatever it is. And you don't want to mess with Sunday, right? So churches are usually pretty careful about how they roll that out. What we typically recommend, although it's not required, is to try starting with something that's not Sunday. 
So start with a, with a prayer group or start with a Bible study um, or maybe just use the lobby so that after church is over. So we see this all the time on Facebook. Like when the, when the service, when you're done watching on Facebook, come over to Zoom and we're all going to gather in Zoom, right? So this would be come over and gather in, in Altar Live. We're going to try that for a while and see what that's like with the tables uh, as kind of a, you know, organic breakout rooms, that kind of thing. So that usually goes a little bit faster. Uh, but each church is different. It really depends on, it's actually the person like you, Jim, who uh, is usually the, the, the one who decides, are you going to go left? You're going to go right? Like, are you going to slow, going to go fast? Um, I rec we, we do find that there, we have had no churches who out of the box, you know, got a lot of adoption. It usually takes four, four weeks before the, you know, the, you can take the training wheels off. Not because of the technology. It's because of the, uh, it's just a change, introducing change. And, um, what we have found is that people like maybe people never used Facebook or they used Facebook, but now they use it for church or whatever, and they have grown used to it. And for better or worse, that that's where they are. I will just tell you my church. Uh, so my church does not use altar live. Uh, my church is about 800 people. And um, for years we used YouTube as a sermon library. And when COVID hit, we just flipped. We used it and did a live stream one service, 10 o'clock on Sunday. Everybody watched it in August. They got really excited about Facebook and we're going to have a digital campus and at Facebook, every communication that goes out, every single email, all the announcements before church, everything always mentions and find us on Facebook, go over to Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Just this past Sunday, I went to church online at my church. Uh, on Facebook, there were 85 people and on, and on YouTube, there were 450 people. <laughs> so a year, a year of telling everyone, go over to Facebook. And they still don't go. Uh, so it's 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 not the technology; it's the it's the people at that point. So that change management needs to be planned for, and expectations set, uh, and and kind of milestones uh, put in there. So thank you, Jim, for asking that question. Samuel, did you have a question? Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of just like a small technical question. But how often does the application um, push updates? One of the issues that I had with Zoom was often people not being on the same update and that causing a lot of issues. So does, you know, how how often does uh, does, does Alter Live push out updates? Does, okay, does it great. Make it That's fairly easy question. to update. Um, yeah. Uh, and before I answer it, I just want to point out that, yeah, Randall, um, that the very point about switching platforms is a, is a real issue. Um, well, it's browser-based. So if you're on a desktop, there's nothing to push. Right, you're always getting access to the latest on the on the mobile. Right now, we push out updates every week um, because there's always either it's because of bug fixes or we we had we, every week we had issues with the the sign up process. So for four or five weeks, there was a new a new one. Sometimes more than one a week, um, and there are lots more features that every church asks for. And we try to make the uh, the mobile experience equivalent to the desktop experience. So for us, I would say on the on the desktop, I, I would expect weekly weekly updates. Yeah, uh, usually on the phone, those happen automatically. I mean, you can if you've set your if you have your settings for uh, update automatically. Is that the issue? Was that about mobile updates that you were thinking of? Um, well, no, just in general. I mean, I just wanted to know if there were like if you have like like stable builds um, and, and that kind yeah. of well with 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 zoom on zoom on my desktop this is actually a, a native app it's not using yeah. a browser. Uh, there is a browser option i think in in zoom I, I, don't, I don't know if i've ever used it uh but uh alter is all browser based okay okay anybody else have a question a comment? and i have not forgotten deb's request about showing how to set it up Okay. Do we want to switch gears uh, and and show a sample setup? Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, this is probably a good transition point for those who yep. don't if have you, a question if, or don't care to yep. see it set up that you can like, quietly or audibly disappear. Yep. Uh, and I'll thank um, you for I'll all. Thank you all for coming. I'll yeah. wait a second. Thank you so much, Andy. I, I do have one more question besides the demo. Um, we have a lot of people who watch worship after the live stream. Um, is this only available during the live stream period or um, can they go in and watch afterwards? Obviously they're not necessarily gonna be able to partake with the, the meeting rooms, but. Um, Deb, you, 
you, you're making me smile. All right. So um, after talking with, so I, ha I have no ideas of my own. I get, I steal all of my ideas from pastors uh, or, 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 or the tech leaders. And uh, back a couple months ago, I talked to one pastor and he was like, you know, here's what we're going to do. We have certain people who just don't show up on Sunday, either because they work on Sunday or for health reasons or, and actually during this, well, I know at my church, it's that soccer and baseball, Little League, uh, uh, beats church on Sundays for several months. Um, this guy, he was a pastor uh, and uh, it's in New Jersey, kind of close to the shore. So during the summer, people, they go to the shore, but it's far away from church. So they don't go to church in the morning and the, and the shoreline after. They, they're there the, the whole weekend. So they lose people during the summer uh, that way. And what he said is, you know, we have a lot, all those people, we don't know who, who they are necessarily, but we get a lot of on-demand views, right? After the church service is over. So after 10 o'clock, after 12 o'clock, they watch it on Sunday night, they'll watch it during the week. And he said, what we're going to do, we're not going to make it, we're, we're going to make another, a repeat of the, the, of the recording of the service available on, and he picked Monday, on Monday night at 7 p.m. It's only available in altar. So there's, it's sort of, you know, um, appointment, it's still appointment watching, right? It's not purely on demand. But everyone who missed church will be there. And you automatically all have one thing in common, which is that you, you were doing something else on Sunday morning. And the pastor goes to that church service too and sits in the rows and is like, oh, you're going to like, you're going to like this part that's coming up next, you know, uh, and then maybe hangs out at the tables afterwards. So there's a little bit of a bonus to going on Monday because you get to talk with a pastor in a little more intimate setting. Um, so a number of churches have done that. I call it Sunday on Monday. Um, so, uh, so the answer is definitely you can do that. <laughs> um, you do have to set up a time, right? It's not going to be on demand, right? Um, and you'll see when I set it up, um, what, what that would look like. All right. I'm well, presuming the stream would still be sitting out on Facebook too. So they can always just watch it the way they usually do. Yes. But yeah. if in this case, I will unabashedly say it's way better. Yeah. Now, we have people who follow us from Hawaii and they're in a different time zone. So they're generally watching church that was at 10 at maybe 11 or yeah. 12. So anyway, well, you I'll... could do it in ultra life. The thing is it, it would have to be appointment TV. Right. right. Got it. But, uh, it is uh, it, another scheduled event for those who couldn't make it at, at the other time. And I think when, when uh, in, in the hybrid case, um, I'm going to, I'm going to just say there's this one possibility. I'm not going to necessarily advocate for it. Um, that maybe there is a one group that, goes into the building and then at a separate time there's a group that watches it online um, and that way there are there's something that you can do that's just for the online people that they wouldn't be able to get if it was combined with the in person that comes with issues because then it gets to that like we have two different communities so like I said I don't advocate for it there are some advantages I think um, but in the long term I don't know if that's necessarily the healthiest thing for a church so I don't want the tech to drive the, 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 the life, the lifestyle of the church. And Jim, did I see you raise your hand one more time or, all right. So Deb, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, everybody follow along. I can't, when I share my screen, uh, I can't see the way I do it. I can't see you. So uh, feel free to uh, shout out if uh, I need to slow down and repeat something. All right. Bear with me. I got too many windows open. No, not that one. <laughs> oh, here we go. All right. This is a fake church that I have set up called uh, Faith Community. So that's as, as, as generic a name as you can get. Um, so, but when you sign up, you just come in, it says create a community, you give it a name, you say who's the administrator for it, uh, and then the next thing you do is you add an event. So I'm going to go up here into the right-hand corner and add a new event. So the first thing is I'll give it a name, right? So I'm going to call this uh, Southern New England UCC. Um, I can give it an, uh, an image if I want, just pick something from... Mm, 
No, that's a gift. Forget it. Uh, I didn't think I was going to do this, so I didn't have one at the, at, the, at the handy. But I'm going to say what date and time it begins. The key thing here is whatever you set this for, the, the time is whenever you want the live stream to begin, not when you want people to start showing up. Uh, so um, if, you, if you're having people show up at 10 o'clock, uh, you might not want the live stream to begin till 10.05 so that late latecomers uh, will see it. Or you have people arrive five minutes early and you, you start the live stream directly at, at, at your time, but you just pick a time uh, that, that you want it to begin. You can say whether this is going to be uh, like if this is a Tuesday night Bible study, I want this to happen every Tuesday and then I don't have to recreate it every single week. I go on to my next step, which is to find the team of greeters. So I'm going to add people. So this is myself. Uh, these are a lot of people who have joined this community. So anyone in this community I can pick. So this is my, uh, where's my boss right here? Stephanie Lee, she's the CEO. So I'm going to select them. I can say whether you're a host and or a greeter. Um, there's a slight difference in the capabilities there. I'll, I'll go into in a second if you want. You can say what the, um, what, what is the, what's the standard greeting? You know, we're glad that you're here. Please pick a seat or something like that. It might, if it's Easter, it's a happy Easter, everyone. Uh, you can change it every single week. The next step is I view at the permissions. Is this for anyone? Like, you know, you know just like your church now, the door is open to anybody. Um, or is it an event that just for people who already belong to this community? Uh, for churches that have uh, like a church conference or a retreat, oftentimes it's only open to members uh, and not uh, people from uh, the outside. At the time. And then selected members would be like if I'm having a meeting, I only want these five people. Uh, so I'll pick those members, right? So I'll go and I'll just pick one, two or three. If I pick, these are real people. If I pick them, they'll get an email that says they're invited to one. So I won't pick them right now. Uh, but we, I usually keep it uh, open to anyone. And then here is the nice, and this is the most interesting part, actually, which is uh, where is the stream going to come from? So it can come from Facebook or YouTube or Vimeo. And then these are, um, these five down here, these are streaming services. Um, you also can actually do Zoom. We don't have Zoom li listed here. Uh, there's some custom embedding that you can do. Um, I always pick a Vimeo. And then I have a, I have a cheat here, which is, oops, I don't want to use this. So I've got some videos here. So I'll just take, uh, I'll take this, this is an altar live one. So I'm gonna copy the link and I just go back here and I paste in the link. All right, and I'll get a little preview here. And then last is I'm gonna say, are there any slides that I want to, to for everyone to see beforehand, right? So I might just pick something like that. Um, I can have multiple. So these can be your announcements or pictures from the, uh, the youth retreat that just happened or the mission trip or, or something like that. And um, you, they're, they're just uh, eye candy. They'll, they'll roll back, uh, you know, for five seconds or 10 seconds. You can pick how long you would like them to roll. And then they'll, they will present on the screen until the time that you selected for the live stream. And then the live stream will begin. And, uh, and then I just publish that. And here we are. So from here, I can just click right in here. I can copy the URL and now I can put that in my newsletter or in the email or put it on the website. Uh, and then anyone who clicks there, they'll, they'll come directly in. When I click here, uh, I see all, all these tiles are all the events that, I, that, that are for this faith community. So for your church, you might have all the tiles for all of the upcoming events as well. And I'll click on that. And you see there's my pre, there's my slide ahead of time. Um, I had this, to, I had this to start at nine, uh, nine thirty or something like that, which is in 54 minutes. Um, but I can go live right now. So I'm going to click this go live button. And now the video is going to begin. So everybody who's present in the, in, in the event, I'm going to go ahead and pick a seat. And now I'm in there. And then there is, I'm a host of this. And so one of the options I have as the host is to move everyone to the lobby. Right, so that's that's going to give me a 10 second warning, and you see here I'm in I'm in this row right here. When I hover over, you can see my name, uh, and when we move to the lobby, I'm going to be at a table. So you see, I was still talking and uninterrupted. If there was anyone here with me, uh, you know, they would be able to continue hearing me in a in a stream. And now I'm just at a table, and of course I can jump from from one table to the next. I'm the only one here, so it's not as exciting as if you were all here with me, uh, but. That's how, that's how quick it is to set up. 
I think I saw you smile, Deb. I came back and you were smiling. So that, that must have gone well. <laughs> I think you are on uh, I think mute, you're Deb. muted. So one of the things uh, early on actually uh, was uh, every time you had an event, you had to create a, you had to set it up again and it had another, a, a new URL, which was a pain in the neck for the administrator. Cause that meant, oh man, I got to update it everywhere I posted it. And any, if someone reads last week's email and just says, oh, there's the link, I'll click on that. They're going to go to a dead event. So now we have it. So that's it's the same URL for any event that's recurring at the same time on the same day of, of the week. So a little bit of clarification, Andy. So you, in your example, you picked a uh, video uh, that was already, you know, it, it could have been a pre, it could have been a uh, cached or a pre-recorded uh, worship service, but you you brought that in from Vimeo. That's right. Uh, but you could have, uh, which is a good way of doing that, um, you know, Sunday on Monday um, yeah. uh, example. Usually, though, that would not be a video. You would be you have the option in your list there. If I'm if I'm uh, following correctly, uh, where you could input the stream URL and stream key. That's right. Thank thank you, Eric. Yeah, and uh, it's particularly easy if you're using YouTube uh, because YouTube mm -hmm. will give you a premiere uh, uh, link. Uh, so the, the the video, of course, won't start on YouTube until whatever the time is. Whatever whenever that time is is when it will start on Alter Live as well. Uh, Facebook also does premieres, but they don't publish the URL until the event goes live. And it, live, right. and all of our, all, we have a small handful of churches who do that. And the admin makes a mad dash when Facebook starts and they copy it and put it, paste it into, into Alter Live. I'm sure there's some swearing that goes on uh, during that. Um, and Vimeo also, um, can you do a premiere? You can do a premiere on Vimeo. It doesn't work as well when it's uh, a premiere on Vimeo. Uh, the reason is, um, with YouTube, when I'm watching, uh, if I, let's say I show, you're all there and I show up late and I come into the live stream, I'll pick it up wherever YouTube is at that time. And if I pause and then unpause, you know, like pause for a minute and then I hit play again, it will bring me to where YouTube is right now. Vimeo does not do that. It doesn't have the, it doesn't have the syncing. So that's something we're, we're, we're seeing if we can, there's no API for it. At least, if there is, we have we don't know it, um, so um, it doesn't work as well with, uh, with Vimeo. So each of the each of the platforms has their, has their idiosyncrasies. Cool. Any questions? Uh, perhaps Andy, if you could uh, put your contact information in the in the chat, if somebody wants to reach out. Um, any other questions, folks? Comments. I should mention one thing. Uh, I do have a marketing bone in my body. Um, to use the uh, interactive services, you do need to have a paid subscription. Um, and it is $69 a month. For the first month, it's $29. Uh, that covers our costs. Um, and it, it makes it less prohibitive to just get started. If you want to just play with it, $29 is a little less painful than uh, $69. Uh, to do that, um, you can always contact me or go to our website. It's on our website. But just use the word uh, community all capital letters, and that'll get you a discount code. So if you want to play with it, you can get started for $29. Hi, can you hear me again? Yes. We, Yay, we I'm can. back. There you go. I, back. I lost I lost everything for a minute. Everything froze. Um, with regard to billing, so probably like many churches, we don't use a credit card to pay bills. Our treasurer pays things. Is there that option for billing? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know there is not. It is credit card right now, which is just for simplicity sake. Uh, but I can see that that's not going to be simple for you. <laughs> um, it's not to say that we can't figure it out. Um, it's only credit card then. So there's no like bank. That's right. Yeah. Anything. Okay. That's something we have to work out at our church for other things too. So, okay. Thank you. Uh, Mike Higgins, uh, on the bottom row, I know that you don't have video on. Um, I just want to make sure that you um, had a chance to um, to ask a question. Same with Jim. Um, I know, Jim, you asked once um, or, or maybe twice, but I just want to make sure Mike has a chance. I'm good, Eric. Thank you. Okay. 
Anybody else have a question or comment? Andy, thank you so much. It was it was a pleasure. Likewise. And uh, Bob, I'm looking for you on Sunday. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't want you to be chartreuse alligator. I want you to be Bob Yates. Clicking. Are you going to be there? It is Memorial Day weekend. You, you could be doing something else. It's nine o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> before you get started. <laughs> so Bob just asked you, Andy, if you were going to be there. <laughs> oh, I. Uh, that's a little bit late. It's not nine o'clock in the morning. They're, they, it, it's it's ten o'clock their time. It's twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock my time. Well, my well time. they have more than one service, and the one well, I was on yeah, yeah, yeah. started well, at nine fifteen, our time. And I'm in the they thing. used to have two. They used to do two services in Alder Live. Now they just do one. So they so the last time you were there was uh, so they've switched it to just the later service. I was there Sunday and looked on the 915. I'm going to have to check that out. <laughs> All right. Uh, but uh, I might be there. I might be there. All right. I log okay. in and I admit my I make my name Andy, Alter Live Andy, uh, because I'm there for troubleshooting in case uh, somebody has questions. Every every uh, every gathering has subplot. Yeah. But. I go to 50 or 60 church services on Sunday. Wow. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm overchurched, yes. Eric, yes, one exactly. question. Where's yes. the recording of this going to be posted? It will be posted um, on the SNE UCC website, and I will work on it first thing tomorrow morning uh, since I have some available time. Yay. Thank you. That happened. Yep, no problem. Appreciate it. Well, thank you, everyone. I really enjoyed it and um, some great questions and observations. So I uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much, Andy. Take care, Andy. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, y'all.